Hello you, it's the review number 222. Two, two. Uh, not really sure how to start this one. Pretty much I just got a new cliff jumper and I'm like, I should do a video about cliff jumper. So, uh, welcome to that. Because I do kind of love that guy. He's just always around, sort of floating about the lower A-list like Spicy Bumblebee. Just the Autobots resident hot-headed something to prove ass tough guy respect Amanda without his superstar siblings kid appeal special baby baggage. But on the shelves he's almost always a tedious recolor wave padder. Just the ketchup to Bumblebee's mustard, which is fine, repaints are valid, as it going, Skywarp? But it does mean that poor old Cliffy J barely even enters my mind for videos. But it's 2020, Earthrose is on the scene, and look at that! It's Cliff Jumper o'clock! Right then, brouhaha rules. This isn't gonna be every version of Cliff Richards that's ever existed. I don't wanna hear, um, phew, what about Energon Cliff Jumper? What about Energon Cliff Jumper? What about him? This is what I've got, this is what we're doing, don't at me. Do not, I swear to God, if you at me. All right, now give me a bump, and let's Cliff Jump! So, G1 Cliff Jumper landed in the first wave of the Takaro Hasbro re grab gadge grab gadge gadge so G1 Cliff Jumper landed in the first wave of the 1984 Takara Hasbro rebrandaganza as part of a trio of almost indistinguishable mini car mini bots. And honestly, they're so similar that to talk about one of them is to talk about all of them. So this is now effectively a group review. Get in here, hubcap, you maniac. Yes, indeed. Check out this baby sized beast. Can't believe I'm sitting here in 2020 holding friggin' G1 Cliff Jumper and saying, check it out. This is a toy so basic and so fundamental to the whole Transformers thing that it almost feels redundant to try and review it. I mean, this feels like the source code of every transforming robot car toy that ever happened. The seed that grew into a thousand Autobots. I mean, look at it. This is unashamedly a man made of car. Its body is the roof of a car with the windows of a car. Its arms are just bars with wheels on. Its feet are bonnet and bumpers. Its face is stuck on a plate that folds out the back of a car. You know, the classic. And it transforms in like two seconds into a car. Which, how are you not gonna love it? You gotta be made of stone. It's just a little pocket-sized pleb with big bloaty back wheels and a super dramatic spoiler, like a dodgem. But I tell you, man, the thing about staying interested in these bloody things is that the more detail you find out, the less the whole thing makes sense. Because these mini boys came from the Takara Micro Change line rather than Diaclone, like the larger motor men, and they were designed after penny racers, which is why they're so pleasant and poundy. It's a toy disguised as another toy? Like, in the same way that Soundwave and Perceptor and Reflector turned into, like, household gadgets, the Miniman that would go on to become Cliff Jumper was supposed to be literally a little robot, this big, hiding in your toy box, disguised as a toy car. Which all makes the cartoon seem fairly ridiculous, doesn't it? I mean, I always thought it was just a stubby little compact, like a Vauxhall Nova or something, but it's actually a squished up stylized Porsche? No! But yeah, that's G1 Cliff Jumper. He's just part of the foundation, man. The C and the ABCs. I mean, I personally grew up with Bumblebee and Hubcap and got Cliff Jumper years later. You may have noticed this is the 2007 keychain re release, hence the shoulder mounted scene kid flesh tunnel, but it feels like he was always there. And I've always appreciated the little square sidebars there. They're looking way better than Bumbles do. And I really dig how they work. Like, this one's slightly higher, that one's slightly lower, so they slide in parallel. I don't know, it's such a simple move, but I've always liked it. I remember noticing it as a kid and thinking, oh, I get it. I get you, Transformers. But mainly I wanted to show you all three of these baby bros to stress the point that Cliff Jumper wasn't always a repaint. I mean, clearly they're kindred kiddos, but they are different. It does quickly get hazy, though, when you consider there was actually a yellow Cliff Jumper variant and a red Bumblebee. And then you got Hubcap in the mix with Bumblebee's colors and a shape that's very Cliff Jump esque. Plus, there was another one the elusive Bumble Jumper, the forbidden fourth micro chain. Penny Pal, who wasn't even supposed to be a Transformer, but a few of them got out there somehow, mislabeled as one of these jokers. You see what I mean about the more you learn, the less it makes sense. Nobody knew what they were doing. It's barely controlled chaos. And can I get a Bumble Jumper? No. They're out there. Just can't get them. The missing no of Transformers. Anyway, all that muddled microchange mayhem was probably what led to Cliff Jumper's individuality being left in the 80s, as he was relegated to being Bumblebee's Player 2 palette swap easy repaint. But why's that gotta be a bad thing? Some of them are alright. Take, for example, Classics Cliff Jumper, who kicked off the Red Ratbag's repaint rampage as, I think, the first truly post G1 fully formed Cliff Jumper update. 
Cliff Jup date. Honestly, any excuse to get this lad on the channel. I freaking love this guy. Because Classics was part of what lit the fire in me to get collecting, as I may have mentioned in every video this year. And at the time, I really wanted to scope out all the Classics designs, but I was still ass deep in my stupid, sulky bollocks to bumblebee phase. So guess who was there for me? That's right, alcoholism. But yeah, it might be the buyers talking, but I reckon this is one of the best figures of that entire decade. I mean, the whole design of it is aggressively bumbular. The body's all curves and chub with the windscreen tabard and the totally unaltered bumble bonce. But I reckon it feels cliff jumpy enough. It's got that feisty rough and tumble rabble rousing readiness with the giant stompy cliff pumps and the big blobby ball joints making so much fun to mess with. Although he's definitely not slick with these eyesore arm panels and clunkingly clumsy non-tilty feet. And get this, at the time this guy was considered pretty undersized for a deluxe. <coughs> so they bundled him with this daft shoulder mounted jet ski backpack jetpack. I don't know, it's desperately daft and I never really got it, but god damn if it ain't iconic. <laughs> Transformations are pretty straightforward, lie down and fold up, but it's entertainingly easy going with plenty of deeply satisfying heavy soft clunkage. Yeah, that's it. Heavy soft clunkage. That's the tagline. Carbo's just an adorably bouncy boy racer bump with steely blue headlights and delightfully douchey decals. It's definitely a bit dated, but not necessarily in a bad way. I mean, I guess the sculpting's a bit bare bones next to Siege and that, but the shapes bang on. It's a heck of a handful, and I love that they gave it Seats. Two seats on a deluxe, ten years before Titan Masters, far too small for anything to sit in, plus a trailer with a jet ski on it. That is the epitome of extra. The apex for me. So, admittedly, Classics Cliff Jumple Stiltskin's probably a bit old hat at this point, but the mold is unambiguously a banger. This is the Mr. Bright side of Transformers. Sure, it's mainstream as shit and could not be more mid 2000s. And maybe it is just the same thing twice, but. I've got to dance. But it is also the toy that opened the floodgates on a crimson tide of red repaints that saw basically every version of Bumblebee snotted out again with a different primary colour and a scribbled out name tag, including but far from limited to the Movieverse, which dropped a Jumpman sometime around Movie 1 in both Legends and Deluxe Size servings. And I'm pretty sure I did have the Deluxe Size one at some point, but like it didn't work or something, because it had some of that automorph in it they were trying to push at the time, but it was misaligned by like one tooth so the whole thing didn't work. Something like that. It's been a minute. Still got the Legends one though and it is not great. That first bunch of movie Legends man, that is some of the roughest shit of all time. But I get why and I do sympathise with the design team that had to make the jump from the blocky bliss of Transformers Cybertron straight to translating concept art that looked like this into workable toys and then also shrinking them down to pocket size. I couldn't do it. But this is bad. Just a very strange, ugly, lumpy, unsatisfying little dink of a thing with a frustrating, parts clashy transformation and a boring, malformed alt mode from the days long before the Bumblebee movie finally blessed our Cliff with a design of his own. Uh, two designs. Oh, what? Too soon? Or are you concerned that I didn't wait for the Studio Series one? Look, if I sit here and wait for every single figure to come out, I'd get even less done. Do you know how many figures there are? But okay, you want some Cybertronian cliff jumper action? I got you. Oh, mate, now we're cooking. Yes, indeed. On your feet for Transformers United Cliff Jumper Cybertron mode. The tarted up Takara version of Generations War for Cybertron Cliff Jumper. That's War for Cybertron the video game, not War for Cybertron the trilogy. And it's Transformers United, not United. Night Warriors, which is not confusing. Now, we did actually dive into the Bumblebee of this reasonably recently. Reasonably? And while this is the same kind of good but sort of annoying figure, with all the same neato design foibles and aggravating mechanical quirks, it's not just a pure recolor. Check him out, rocking the trademark narrower noodle for flipping once. Might have been the actual first one, but it couldn't end there, could it? It couldn't have just been an updated, correct headed Cliff O, could it? Because while Cliff wasn't actually in War for Cybertron, he was was in the sequel, Fall of Cybertron, where in a strange reversal of their eventual movieverse fates, Cliff Jumper confidently cruised into the role of resident scrappy adventure blob after poor Mr. Bumble didn't make it out of level one. We have lost me. 
And because they went ahead and did the toy before the game he was eventually in, they missed the memo on his new horny on main head style, and instead went straight for the G1 angry acorn. Ugh, whatevs man, at least they did one. At least there is a cliff jumper toy that has got that head. And would you get a load of this prestige Takara paint job, popping like a Cybertron cherry bomb. This is no longer a ketchup versus mustard scenario. This is a fine Pinot Noir versus a goblet of chalky piss. Man got the drip. Don't know about you, but video game cliff jumper definitely captures my flag. Consider me a conquest. We're a team death match made in heaven. But however luxurious and lush, this is just another time poor old Cliffo had to settle for being a retool afterthought peg filler. This is his cross to bear, his cliff to jump, and he wouldn't truly escape until... That's right, baby! It was Transformers Prime that finally saw Cliff jump into the world of the future with his very own vibe. Coming on like Bumblebee's hard-ass gym bro and showing off his fresh personalized look for approximately one minute before he died. Clean that up. Is it because he's red? Is this a Star Trek thing? Is this a nerd thing? Uh. But yes, we did take a look at old Cliff the Rock Jumper here when it came out. Although at the time I wasn't really sold on Prime and the whole review it just feels like I'm trying to wriggle out of the video I'm already making. So once more with feeling. Now this is TFP CJ's Robots in Disguise figure. That's Transformers Prime Robots in Disguise, which again, not confusing. And this still feels exciting to me. But like, this was seriously such a game changer. Casting Cliff Jumper as a righteously redesigned rugged Bruce, reveling in his minibot no more full size fierceness. Check out the head with its bovine bonce horns, angular nose guard and gritted snarl. Torso's rocking a roof and grill body type that's actually really unique, although it is mostly lies. Like all the actual bodywork and headlights and that are all tucked up on his back or dangling off his shoulders. It's fine. I mean, this is from a generation of toys that really only looked any good from the front. I mean, from the back, he's all empty ass shin reliefs and gigantic vacuous forearms clattering about. And also he's got like fake dummy wheels right next to his real ones. <sighs> Leave it. Come on, turn him around. Don't be a narc. Transformation's still god tier for a deluxe. Like, yes, it's demonstrably cheating, but everything works in an interesting way and it all just cinches up so perfectly. Plus it's from the final days of the dramatic head reveal. Although it does leave the car mode playing the world's shittest game of peekaboo. Object permanence, what's that? But man, what a car mode. Look at this absolute weapon. Pounding out the 70s superfly muscle car swag, flashing the horns and the double double exhaust. Exhausts. Honestly, man, just the absolute balls on this redesign. The imagination, the quality, and oh my god, the vibe? This is seriously some all-time Hall of Fame shit. But isn't it a little bit magical when they take a beloved character, give them a complete overhaul, totally nail it, and then just never come back to it? In fact, while we're here, let's have another one. Come on. Yes, mate, let's sneak in a cheeky chaser with this shot glass-sized CJ from Cyberverse. Transformers Prime Cyberverse. No, it's not confusing. It makes loads of sense. And you know what? This thing's actually pretty great. I mean, it is simple, but it looks decent. It's such a glow up from the little movie one. It's wildly poseable and playable for a thing this size. The arms are clever. The body's clever. The legs are clever. Like considering it's so tiny, that transformation is just next level, man. God, I was fully not interested in Prime Cyberverse when it was around, but it's actually kind of a miniature miracle. Like they really put their entire ass into it. They're all really good and Cliff in particular is just a pocket-sized package of perfection. Post-emptive respect. <sighs> okay, checkpoint. We good? We feeling okay? We hydrated? Can I trouble you for a thumb up? Maybe you subscribe? Maybe ring that bell if you feel like it? I've got a Patreon. Either way, thanks for watching. I'm glad you're here. Gotta play the game, ain't you? Anyway, it wasn't long before we were back to boring old red bumble business as usual when this little Legends class love lump landed in Generations Thrilling 30, which is... Just the worst name. Look, you gotta know when to alliterate, okay? There are no cool sounding words that begin with a th. Take it from few, I've checked. So this saucy little sucker's kind of the last remnant of the War for Cybertron ways. Still rocking the Xbox inspired space bug look long after the game was finished gouging us for DLC. And it's certainly a smoother, simpler, smaller headed sword with a bit of a suit of armor style going on with the shoulders, right? And I don't know, he's perfectly passable. He's got like above average posability and 
a shocking kibble pack. The hands transform with like a cool foldy out move, and this all modes a touch more regular road car than the old Cybertronian Turbo Dome, with like a spoiler and a bumper, and actually a bit of an animated influence. You can really see it in yellow, right? I suppose on the whole it's pretty standard, but I don't know, it's working for me. It might just be because I missed it when it came out, and it definitely has the feel of that whole Scout Legends size class transition period, with like Swerve and Cosmos and them, which was great, and somehow still feels very now to me. I mean, we only just finished that set of Generations minibots, like really, really recently, but for me this is still a way better Jumplebee mold than the Titans Return one. Just a cooling cocktail of a bit of G1, a bit of IDW, a bit of High Moon, even a dash of animated, all in one compact bite-sized capsule. Anyway, we're well into the 2010s now, and it wasn't long before those lovable grifters in the unofficial scene started eyeing up our hot-blooded home slice for their own nefarious ends. Let's third party hard. First of the third then is this mech planet mother lover. From the makers of Big Yellow Bee, this is Hot Soldiers Fly Over Mountain. This is real. So this chonky chub jumper is unflinchingly bringing the small brain G1 with knees upgrade to the micro change generation as a respectable reshell of the big B boy. Are we still saying reshell, or was that just for Combiner Wars? And make no mistake, this is a remake. It's not a reimagining. It's barely even an update. This is a straight up, straightforward G1 cash in, and sometimes that's okay. No shade, no shame, but no surprises. I mean, it's not exactly a marvel of engineering. It's all bog standard ball joints and hinges and a big empty bod concealed by a cheeky backpack accessory. Backcessory? Backpack accessory? Backsackarack? But backarack. But somehow these proportions just work loads better for the cliffy look. Like it's almost exactly the same as old Yeller's awkward stretch bloat, but the cut's a little different. Plus he totally sells it with this massive silver snipe zooka. Oh boy, get ready for a shitload of those. And he even happens to scale perfectly with the other modernized minibots. Is that a coincidence? Hot soldiers are all this big. I think it just worked out. And the alt mode's awesomely adorable. Adorable. Just a chunky little roundy mound that perfectly evokes the old penny racer peon with the same shiny bouncy wheels, the same windows with the same gentle upward curve. And you know what I mean? How is this ever supposed to be a Porsche? This is a mini metro. So little Mr. Mountain here may well be a super straightforward sucker, but don't you just want it? There's not a whisper of pretense here. He knows what he is, and he's just being what he is. Just him, just that. We stan a based pogger. But dude, there's a whole world of third party stuff out there. And we're still talking about the same one from the Bumblebee video. Get with it, granddad. <laughs> Now, Iron Factory have become a bit of a stylistic stalwart of the three PC, with a get it done gumption you've got to respect, and a consistent mechanistic aesthetic that always flips my brain into like technical mode. I love how they always manage to find a unique slant on the characters, like that one Optimus Prime they did that was War Within X God Jinrai. Excellent. And this newish, hottish, cliff jumper ish bish, based off a long forgotten Guido design from All Hail Megatron. They really did that. Thing is, the quality is all over the shop. Plus, they are tough. Tiny. That does make them pretty competitive out in the unregulated 3P black marketplace, but that's not my issue. I just really don't like how they feel. Like the joints are always mega tight. And because they are so mechanically minded, they just come off a little bit sort of stiff and serious. It just really doesn't vibe with me, you know? Anyway, all this is true for mini one man army here, or mama. And it's really got me conflicted because it's definitely got some heat, man. The design's dazzlingly different. He's got four weapons on the go, including a three part Combine Azuka? It's not bad. There's a fire to it and a freshness, but it's all friction. I mean, he can pose, but it's hyper tight and fussy. The shoulders just bonk into everything. It just won't let me enjoy it. Transformation does do a lot of things right, though. Well, that's clearly where most of the energy of this figure is. It's got a powerfully satisfying spatial economy, but the car mode just looks daft. Look at it, like a dumbass little Lego mi Oh, crap. Dumbass little Lego mini clubman. And like the nose is constantly drooping. Just a tiny bit, just a couple of degrees, but it's just no fun, man. It just feels like it doesn't have room to do what it wants to do. Like there's almost too much idea for this size. And like, I don't want to be dunking on Iron Factory because their ideas are so good. They're out there taking chances. But with little baby mama here, I don't like it. 
and I don't like that I don't like it. It comes off like somebody's toy design project that looked amazing on the computer, but it was betrayed by the inconveniences of having to exist in the material 3D realm. Should have stayed a CAD file. Which just about brings us back to this year and the reason we're even talking about CJ. Ah shit, here we go again. It's Transformers Earthrise Deluxe Class Cliff Jumper. Now I know what you're thinking, and I know it's all anybody wants to talk about with this thing, but this is Deluxe Class? Really? This is Deluxe Class. Deluxe Class. This. Really. Is. Like, it's brazenly, unmissably, way smaller than anything else in this tier. But I guess Earthrise is on that whole G1 faithful thing, so of course Cliffjumper's small. He should be small. And like, we're not doing the whole Legends thing at the moment. All the little dudes in Earthrise are like Target Masters and ramps. So what do you do? You redefine Deluxe Class. Because what is Earthrise even doing with its Deluxes? I mean, Wheeljack's pretty standard, but like, Cliffjumper's tiny, Hoist is gigantic, and Ironworks is like a mini a garage that's also a robot and a suit of armor? F yeah! It's anarchy down here! I suppose what they're trying to do is show us a different take on what deluxe class can mean. Free your mind, man. It's just a price point. It doesn't have to be a strict set of rules about height and points of articulation. And with Cliff, it's all quality. Like, I don't think anybody was actually asking the question, what is the midpoint between Legends class and Masterpiece? But there's your answer. Because check it out, it does clearly draw a lot from MP21, with the little square shoulders and the giant wraparound stompy shoes. Not to mention the quality of this gorgeous glossy plastic. It really feels like the premium dream. The dreamium. The sculptor's immaculate. And it is actually a bit of a different take on old Cliff Tannen. This body's a smidge more simplistic than usual. Just like a rounded ridgeless roof. Like I personally prefer a touch more angular chonk but we vibing. The face is absolute perfection. These arms are so small and slick. It's the prince of posing. It could definitely do the WFC dance with the weapons and the bing bang booby blast. Also, as the runt of the pack, he's kind of obliged to fill up the box with this massive five-piece bazoo cannon made out of two honking-ass pistols with cheeky stand flaps and this... Paddle? I don't know. But if we're doing accessories, we're gonna have to talk about the backpack, I'm afraid. Cause look, this entire cliff lump just slinks off wholesale so we can hold it like a shield, I guess. Plus it's on this dumbass fold-away handle that's impossible to get out. So it's not even worth trying to do the thing unless you've got your tweezers handy. That really ain't cute, man. It's nakedly cheating. It isn't cool. It's not even convenient. I just leave it on the back, honestly. Also, probably could have used an auto badge there, but I feel like it's kind of more on us now to fix that if we feel like it, they are wildly available. Anyway, Earthrise is still on that bonus box puzzle bullshit with like a semi-concealed star map thing. I kind of love the general artwork. It's got like mad industrial metal in a booklet energy, but I'm really not sure if this has the same legs that the Siege thing did, because there doesn't seem to be anything to figure out. You just, there it is, you found it. You don't even really need the decoder. It's better be going somewhere. Man, if that transformation don't sum it up. Like, mostly, it's masterful. The way the feet flaps deploy out and the torso flips and switches and merges down into a perfect automobile beast. But then the whole rear third of it just slides on for some peasant level parts forming. Like, he's literally holding it on with his own hands. Bruh. But yes, here we are at the finish line with Cliff Jumper's final form. For the G1 style for a bit. And yeah, when everything's folded down and cinched up super tight, you really do feel the smallness here. Because this really is the littlest deluxe car former of all time from any line, I assume. Can't be bothered to fact check, don't feel like I need to. And I'm not trying to dispute that or make excuses for it, but I do really like it. This is a bitchin' blend of all the best cuts of Cliff, with the G1 Minimobile's stodgy angles baked into the meaty TF Prime muscle car flavor. And sure, it's a small portion, but it's still a whole snack. It's just alive with chunky luxury, plus two different weapon up mask modes. Like you can either bash everything on top in a long sort of pipe, or you can scrounge up some kind of rocket booster snowmobile thing. Is that from an episode? Don't answer that, I don't care. But like, when do you ever get a single episode scenario mode on a $20 toy? That's some masterpiece shit. But more 
more than anything, I'm just buzzed that Mr. Cliffo got a G1 adjacent toy that is him first. Because they could so easily have just bashed some red on Titans B and clocked off early. But I think they knew that Cliff Jumper needed a little something else. He's not like Bumblebee, man. He's friggin' hard edged. He's not some squishy little Volkswagen oo soft bean. He's pretty much Autobot Knuckles. And this thing recognizes that. There is perhaps a hint of Camaro crossover rolled in there for future repaintage. Mind you, Hubcap, who saw that coming? Anyway, I imagine that it's too small conversation probably ain't going away anytime soon. And honestly, it does hurt knowing that a good chunk of it's just a fake out. But I'm gonna go ahead and relish it for what it is, both for its face value excellence and its weird disheartening choices. And if you're not feeling it, I respect that. I mean, it's not like this is the final culmination of all Cliff Jumper kind. It's just this year's model. If we've learned anything today, it's that Cliff Jumper is the establishment. There will be another Cliff Jumper. Hmm, unless the world ends this year. So that's Earthrise, and that about does it. Cheers for jumping all these cliffs with me. Massive heartfelt thanks to Chad, and to Charlie G, and to Jules Prime for assistance with procurement. Stay safe out there, won't you? And, as if you had any choice in the matter, stay sexy. <laughs>jump the cliff. Thanks for sticking around to the end. Sorry for uh, keeping you waiting for this. This one kind of ground me down to a stub. It's weird right now. Anyway, big thank you to Stu Wilson for supporting the show. You are too kind. yippee ki yay Bumble Jumper. Be sure to subscribe for more Thew's Awesome Transformers reviews. Limited appeal. Keeping it real.